Hey there, listeners. In this week's podcast, we discuss Videodrome and the Invisible Maniac. Welcome to Two Guys and Some Horror. We watched two movies, primarily. The two films that we watched, the first one is supposed to be a critically acclaimed horror film. Um, It was Videodrome from 1983. Uh, Quick synopsis is... um, Let's see... Gentleman by the name of Max Wren. He's the president of Civic TV, a Toronto uh, UHF television station specializing in sensationalistic programming. Basically, the dude makes softcore porn. Um, it's or it's a Canadian. It. It's a pure Canadian. The movie is Canadian, right? Like, uh, yep, yep. So everything James about Wood it. Is, yeah, James Wood is a Canadian actor, so. And it was a David Cronenberg was actually the uh, the director, yep. Which makes some sense because of how he loves to do uh, practical effects with the Cronenberg monsters. Directed and written. So he yeah. wrote and directed this film. <clears throat> it was produced by three other gentlemen. Um, I believe they're all like Frenchmen. Um, we can go into more detail about that, but it's right. yes, it's like a hundred percent. Canadian film. So basically Max, uh, he's out trying to find the next big snuff film for his channel. And, um, in doing so comes across Videodrome <clears throat> and Videodrome is, um, uh, basically being caught via, I don't even know how to put it. What, what are they doing? They're, uh, it's, it's like old school bootleg cable, right? So he's intercepting his buddy, is intercepting the channel and giving him the film. Right, with this magical uh, satellite that very specifically is aimed towards his friend. Right, and at first uh, his buddy Harlan, I think is his name, says, uh, you know, I think it's coming from Russia or whatever. (laughs) He's like got some crazy uh, excuse that he's giving him where it's coming from and um max is just eating out of the palm of his hand right and then so he watches that he only watches they get i think it's like five minutes of footage and then later on they end up going into um you know his interview on a late night television with him and uh i think her name was nikki yeah yeah, yeah, nikki Nikki brand uh uh-huh and uh so they're discussing how tv is bad and uh, sex on TV is even worse, uh, which is basically and the whole time he's hitting on her. Yeah, <laughs> yes. she, she's like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. I'm into you. What did you hold he's on? Like, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna pull up your notes because I think you you commented <laughs> to me during that moment, and uh, it fits so perfectly. So while this thing's loading up over here or whatever, we'll keep going with the synopsis. But I'll wrap back around for that quote because it was so good. So. They're sitting there chit-chatting or whatever, and um, so then he starts really, like, hitting on Nikki, talking about how he's going to take her out because her red dress arouses him and all that stuff. So then she, the the lady who's running the interview, <clears throat> turns to the TV and starts talking to Dr., is it Dr. Oblivion, I believe? Yeah, and, Dr. O, uh, single exclamation quote, Mark, Oblivion. Oblivion. And uh, he starts talking about how he doesn't really appear in person ever. He only does uh, TV shows and he only does it uh, via satellite. He never actually like shows up for this stuff. He does it TV. He does TV within a TV. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which I thought was great. Um, and uh, let's see. Where's your quote? I know I got it right here somewhere. 
because it was freaking hilarious. I don't remember. Oh, it might not actually have that far back, huh? I I think it might be in the uh, in a different video or a different chat. Maybe inside the uh, Dead by Daylight chat, actually. Uh, oh yeah, the first night. That's yeah, that's right. We used our uh, yeah. the other chat room. That was a bit. But it was it was so good. I don't want to miss it. Yeah, yeah, because because then Raptor yells at us to get out of here. <laughs> Video trail. All right, let's pop it in. But yeah, so to continue with the synopsis real quick to try and like round out everything. Um, so Max ends up hooking up with Nikki. Um, she's real freaky and into that uh, sadomasochistic kind of sex, right? And uh, he loves it. Max is into it too. Um, so so they get it on. And then, um, oh, while they're watching Videodrome, which is even better because Videodrome is literally a chick getting beat uh, by two guards. like well, On a clay wall. Yeah, on a clay wall. And then she gets uh, choked to death. Basically, she gets murdered, um, and that's right. what they're that's what they're uh, performing their sexual acts to, and they love it. It really gets them going. Um, later on, oh, it was Malaysia, is where Harlan told him was uh, coming from initially. Because I have a note here that says um, Harlan now tells him, uh, Max that. Malaysia is not where he thought it was coming from, but in fact, that was a ploy by the broadcaster and that it's actually being broadcasted out of Pittsburgh. <laughs> so Pittsburgh is actually where it's happening, uh, where right. it's taking place. Uh, let's see. Oh, I also have a quote here from, from you. Not the hostile movies, please. Oh, God, yeah, no. Actually, watching this. my... Uh, my my barber, the one who messed up my beard today, she was the one and she was like, uh, oh, have you seen the Hostel movies? Because I was telling her that. I was like, yeah, my, we're doing a podcast today for horror movies. She's like, you like horror movies? How, how do you think about the Hostel movies? And I was like, oh. Everyone loves those films, but I, I just, they're, they're shit to me. I don't really care for them. It's just gore. It's gore for gore's sake. Yeah, I mean, totally. People are totally into that. And I don't, I don't ever... Uh... I don't care what other people are into. Like you, you could be into whatever you want to be in. But for me, I'm a, uh, I'm more into it for. I don't know. So one of the big things um, that I love about horror films is just the, the eighty slashers uh, seem to be like my favorites. Um, right. They're, I never take them too seriously. As you never should take any film too seriously. It's just a film. Um, yes, some films portray you know, certain kinds of, uh, political statements or, or whatnot. Um, like Nightmare on Elm Street too. Like, <laughs> so, so that's, that's on the list. We're going to, we're going to get there. We're going to get right. there. So um, back, back on topic, but back on topic. Uh, so Max, so, so basically they get it on and then, uh, he finds out through his buddy that, um, it's actually coming from Pittsburgh, which is a lot closer than they thought it was. And, uh, and yeah, so then Max starts having these uh, hallucinations or these visions, and he doesn't know if yeah. things are real or not real. Right, but he doesn't have the hallucinations until after he gets a videotape handed to him by this lady. And, uh, like, they don't begin directly after he watches Videodrome. So that kind of confused me. They happen, like, right after he... He gets handed this videotape and he watches this video of the next the next scene where he he talks or has the video of her her father the guy who was on the TV interview yeah. with Professor Oblivion yeah now, but so I thought he had one in the elevator going back to work before she brought the tape but I think you're right maybe he didn't he met with her first and then after he met with her in the elevator you're right on the way down he had that that vision so at that point he had i don't know if he watched video drone twice or if he actually had to have the uh the radio signal while he watched it right well so but, it's later yeah. explained that any amount of video drone um 
seeing any amount of videodrome can cause the tumor to grow. Right. And this is also still kind of a uh, unsure thing because they say it's a malignant brain tumor, uh, basically that right. that gets uh, grown. But After you watch videodrome, which I'm assuming it's from the satellite. Right. And yeah, I don't want to. Going to too much detail was spoiling the movie, but it's oh, just remember this show. Um, we should probably have like a giant uh disclaimer Spoiler. like, don't be worried about spoilers here, uh, or don't come here thinking you're not going to get spoiled. We want our viewers to watch the movie, uh, the movies that we choose before they come and listen to the podcast as well, because it's super important to actually have seen it. So when we're discussing it, you know what's going on. Um, if we, we do always have like a five minute spoiler free section and then go on and yeah do a quick synopsis on. that's actually a great yeah idea. so so like with like for now since we're just testing things out we can always come back to this um we could chop it however we need to yeah however you want to do it but <laughs> i don't fuck it i don't know how to like force comedy out when i'm talking about this but the whole the whole tumor thing like that that was a little I don't know. Like, I was confused what Videodrome was. I was confused if... I was like, is it the video he watched with the old guy? Is it is it the porno? And I had a, I had to kind of dig through it a little bit more because I was kind of half watching it. But going back in, it was just... Uh, it was a little surreal. And I'm a bit confused on what was happening. But I'll let you finish your synopsis before I get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... Okay, so uh, he goes and he talks to, uh, he wants to meet with Professor Oblivion. And right. um, instead, the daughter of, uh, was it Masha? Uh, Masha? Masha? Bianca. Bianca. B- Bianca. Who's, Ma- who's Masha? I don't, uh, I don't remember, but there was Oh, a no, Masha. she's the French chick. Masha's the, um, the softcore Is- pornographer. She's the old lady. Oh, right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right, right. right. Masha yeah. the bear. Okay, so he he reaches out to her actually, I think first, and asks her about video drone, what she knows about it, and then through her, Max learns that it's not fake, it's real, and it's the face of like some political movement BS, which is I'm pretty sure that's all, uh, just like total crap, right? So then he goes to talk to Professor Oblivion, but instead meets his daughter Bianca. And Bianca then tells him, like, hey, my dad doesn't talk to anybody unless he approves of it. So tell me why you're here. I'll take that information. And then he'll get back to you if he wants to talk to you. So then that's when Bianca gives um, Max's assistant the the VHS tape. Um, But here's where, so here's where in the synopsis, like, I just want to talk about this scene for a minute. Because this is the real first, uh, I think, hallucination that we get. Because when she comes in and hands in that tape, you're right, like, this is the first real time that he, like, completely loses what's real and what's not. Like, he he thinks he hits her uh, twice. It's not her. It's not her that he hits, either. Right. It's, it's not Bianca. It's, uh, it's Nikki Brand, the girl that left to go to Videodrome after they watched that smut film together. She's like, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a Videodrome porn star. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> he, he like he I'm just sorry. slaps her twice and he's like bam bam and he turns into a redhead and then all of a sudden he's like huh? what the fuck's happening he's like i'm sorry i hit you and she's like huh what are you, you talking about yeah you didn't hit me so then yeah. so then that exchange happens and then uh he just asks her to leave do you need me to give you a wake-up call no i'm good um and then he puts he goes to put the film the vhs into the vcr and then that's when the vcr or the tv and the vcr start to like move and breathe and i remember distinctly there was a part where the freaking tv man the top of it so it's bubbling and moving and that's one thing but then the effect when it gave it veins it looks like the tv actually has like veins on it is when oh, I was like, makes out with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, oh like my face. He puts his face inside and he starts making out with it. Because I'll see. 
because Nikki. it's yeah because it's Nikki. Oh there, man, which you know she's not. So then, so then that that whole creepiness goes on. Uh, he's sitting on the couch, and probably the most disgusting scene in the movie. Uh, his stomach turns into a giant vagina. Now, this is apparently a Cronenberg thing. He is completely obsessed with phallic objects and vaginas. Uh, we're going to have to do some more research into Cronenberg and find out what other films uh, could confirm or deny this. But uh, Well, if you've crap. seen The Fly, the remake, uh, I wouldn't say he's obsessed with monsters, but all of the things he, he creates, they look really fucking creepy. Uh, he, uh, he did the fly. He did, uh, if you've seen freaked with, uh, uh, something frost, uh, as well as gremlins, he did the gremlins monsters. Uh, there's another movie he did where this, I forgot the name of it. I'd have to come back to this, but, uh, Rick and Morty did a joke on Cronenberg monsters where they're just like really creepy amalgamations of what something that looked to be human. Which I guess would be the closest thing. Okay. As far as penises go, maybe, maybe not. I mean, Rick and Morty have an issue, not an issue, but an obsession with penises as it is. All of their yeah, characters' completely. faces are uh, male genitalia, so. And, and I'm vaginas. not surprised. And vaginas. And yep. vaginas. So if, if you look at the Cronenberg monsters there, they're all absolutely just amalgamations of flesh and. Yeah, it's it's just flesh kind of gone wrong. That's amazing. That is amazing. Um, uh, I also love to look at how different films have borrowed from other films. Um, so as we see different things um, throughout watching our films, we'll definitely bring that up and talk about it. Uh, but Cronenberg is a fascinating um, writer uh, and director. Um, so we'll probably get a couple more, uh, Cronenberg films that we'll end up looking at here. This is purely, we're, we're just going to be watching, uh, like I said, one really good, uh, critically acclaimed horror film each week. And then one, um, critically, uh, failed, uh, horror film just for fun, just to kind of have like the good and the bad, and then give our opinions at the end of like, would we watch this again? Um, and, and you know, purely just talk about the film in kind of a fun manner, uh, ripped to shreds. Uh, we could discuss plot holes if we want, but sometimes with horror films, that's a little too easy to do um, because they are horror films, and it's oh. sometimes just way too easy to do that. With this movie there, I wouldn't say plot holes. I would say just what the fuck. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Bluntly. So to kind of fast forward to the end a little bit, um, so Max is then contacted um, by the Videodrome producer. Um, he ends up getting brought in and they discuss with him about uh, how they want to kind of see from his perspective. So they strap this headgear on him um, and then he envisions Nikki uh, standing there in front of him. Uh, they kind of map all that and then he, I think... He blacks out and wakes up in his apartment and um you know with all these different things happening he's he's finding out all these different pieces of some giant conspiracy and uh i don't even know how to describe it really this undermining of television and realistically the world right i mean the whole goal for them is to take take over the world um yeah, yeah. and then without I mean, this is the point where if you don't like spoilers, you might want to fast forward, I guess, uh, a little bit here. So Max ends up murdering his colleagues at the TV station and then later on tries to kill Bianca. But then she stops him, shows him a different videotape of Nikki being strangled to death, which then... It's like it was those guys all the time. <laughs> yep, yep, which then, this is the best part, which then reprograms Max to want to go after Videodrome. And then on her orders, Max kills uh, Harlan and Convex. So Harlan okay, so was his buddy. Let's talk about Harlan's death real quick. Cause okay. that's, that's where the confusion's kind of. What's real and all, what's not all the way. Yeah. So 
during that that part, like he goes in and he his friends like puts a videotape inside his tummy vagina and he's like you ready to kill more people and instead of it looking like a videotape it looks like it looks like just this amalgamation of human flesh and a bunch of like shampoo just dripping off of it and he shoves it in his chest and his hand gets stuck inside and when he tries to pull it out he pulls out like this what looks like he's holding like a metal rod attached to like some fake clenched hand and it's like all bloody and stuff and he starts yelling and screaming and then he runs back and he hits the wall and then he explodes and it's a very clean explosion of bricks and harlan like escapes through the hole and just leaves and during this part there's this little girl by her mommy she's like mommy i want to see the boom and i was like no let's, let's get out of here but i want to see the boom and i'm just it's like did how did his friend really explode or did the flesh the, did the digital become flesh or I'm, I'm a little confused so isn't the flesh though just a um like a like symbolism uh, none of none of what he's hallucinating is real all right but uh, but he still has obviously has a real gun in his hand um, right he really did kill those people but he didn't but Harlan do it. exploded, so that's yeah. what confuses me. No, that's, Harlan exploded, that's a good point. and his he put his hand inside the guy's stomach, and it got chewed up. And I'm wondering, like, what really happened? No, that's that's a great point. That's where I guess we never really got the answer, did we? In the movie, it's a bit, it's a bit confusing. Like, did this really happen? just a hallucination and he blew up his friend and nobody knows that it was him for sure because when he shot his executive friends like they were just trying to question him because he, he faked how he did that i mean because we visually see all that go down but i mean in yeah. real world like non-hallucination real world he could have easily just strapped a grenade to him or you know right. or, or and and threw him out of the the room or whatever maybe um, yeah I mean, but everybody was there when it happened. Too. Yeah, it just yeah. happened. Interesting. And then the other, the other murder, the other killing. So for convex, that was pretty ordinary, pretty plain. Uh, plain. I don't, I don't remember anything too special about that one. Um, I'd also like to take note. I've, I've now seen this movie twice. Um, yeah. Because I watched, <laughs> I watched it by myself. And I was like, holy shit, this is such a good movie. I really want to watch it again uh, with a group of people uh, and then maybe start a podcast. That was like my initial gut instinct. Uh, was like, why not talk about it? Because some of these movies are really great. And then right. <laughs> I had a great idea, not just to watch a great film. Why don't we watch something people absolutely hate or know is bad, but only watch it for like fun purposes which leads us into our next film so unless you have any other notes or comments we'll leave the viewers to watch videodrome and uh get into the synopsis of the second film and start breaking that one down right i mean i won't i won't spoil the ending because i think that's something people should just kind oh, definitely. of see as a what the fuck moment yep but like the last guy he kills that one makes sense that that was a hallucination. The whole the whole hand thing, the the pipes kind of going in, that was just gross. It was just kind of weird. It looked it, it's it hasn't aged well the the effects on that part. But otherwise, yeah, I would uh I don't know how I feel about it. I'm still kind of I don't know if I liked it. I don't know if I disliked it. It was it was something that was unique compared to a lot of horror movies. This is definitely on my annual watch list now. I will give it that. I would. James I Woods, would watch this once a year. Yeah, James Woods knows how to overact. He definitely does. Um, another great film I love him in. I didn't realize it was uh, John Carpenter's Vampires. Oh, I haven't seen it. So we'll have to put that on the list for you then, because that would be one of those kind of bad uh, horror films <laughs> that people probably don't love as much, but I find to be very funny. Um, and it's got uh, hookers in it that completely get their heads ripped off and split down. Anyways, it's, it's got some really funny moments in it um, with a bunch of vampire hunters. 
So that was Videodrome in a nutshell. Um, that's our opinions on it, at least. And, uh, you know, give it a watch. And then, uh, yeah, let us know what you guys think. So the next film uh, that we decided to pick, or that I made Clark watch. Um, wait, do you want to be called Clark, or do you want a funny name? <laughs> Clark's fine. Clark's fine. Okay, good. Because um, I'm like, I'm going to end up calling you Clark like 90% of the time. So, Duh. um yeah, so the next film that we picked uh, that I forced Clark to watch, basically, we watched it together actually the other night, um, luckily, is called The Invisible Maniac. So I've also seen this film now twice in the last week, and I have to say, um, it's pretty bad. Like, there isn't a good way to put it. Um, yes, there's funny moments, but for the most part, this is just a really bad uh, horror pornography film. <laughs> like, that's probably the best way to put it. Uh, so quick synopsis, um, there is a scientist, uh, super brilliant guy, he's a genius, and um, a doctor told his mother when he was young that he would end up becoming a serial killer and that he would harm uh, people, and he's just too darn smart. So that's, that's how the movie opens. Fast forward, uh, you know, I don't know, 20 years, 30 years, he looks... 30 years old at least, but he's probably not that old really in the film. And um, he's trying to show a board of doctors uh, like this new experiment that he's come up with. And basically the experiment is that he can turn himself invisible. And he's so, <laughs> he's so like arrogant about it that he's just going to do it to himself and he's not going to, you know, use an animal or anything like that. So he shoots himself up. And, um, and yeah, nothing happens. <laughs> and all of the doctors <clears throat> just start laughing at him and calling him a hat. You're a disgrace. <laughs> yeah. I, I came all the way from Belgium for this. Um, probably one of my favorite quotes in that scene. Um, total, totally Americanized uh, accent. I came all the way from Belgium for this. Like that, that's good. That's funny. And, um, yeah, so anyways, uh, he, he snaps and kills all of these people in this room. Kills four. He kills, strangles. That's true. He strangles kills and four. overpowers four people. And it's the, the dumbest looking strangling I've ever seen in my life. Oh, the briefcase kill was hilarious, though. He literally yeah. killed someone with a briefcase. Um, so, yeah, so that, that all happens. And then... He goes to a mental asylum. He breaks out of the mental asylum, uh, which doesn't even look like a mental asylum. You could tell that this is definitely like more of a low budget film for its time. Um, and what's weird is its release date was 1990. Um, and I'm looking at the uh, poster, uh, movie poster or the VHS uh, cover. And it definitely looks like a 90s film. Like the colors they use, the fonts they pick, everything that they have production wise for it is definitely a 90s film. But the one it's thing, low quality. yeah, the one thing that I can't get past is is the low budget feel of the cover, um, and how it just it doesn't look like a movie. It looks more like a porn. Like it definitely has that porno cover kind of feel, and we don't need to dive too far into that. But if um, if you look into some of the actresses that are in here, um, they even point out like on the Wikipedia page, there's. Uh, a gal in the movie who ends up going on to become um, the indisputable porn queen, though her life was forever fraught with personal disappointments and drug addiction. So like there was a, there was a, I believe a woman in the film who was one of the students and uh, basically she tried to quit porn. So she wanted to be an actress. So this was the film she did. And then if you watch the film, there's boobs everywhere, left and right. And yep. Basically, she couldn't get past... I don't think she can get away from that. So she was kind of stuck in that um, that role forever. So to round out the synopsis, uh, he gets out of this insane asylum, heads to the school. Um, I mean, it's very spoilery how, how I'm giving this, but that's kind of the point of this. Uh, so you can get a quick synopsis of the film. Uh, kills the teacher, um, becomes the teacher, and then just wants to be a, a physics teacher. Right? That's all he wants to do. But these kids pick on him and end up driving him to go right back to his crazy ways. And then that's when the murders ensue. All right. And from then on, 
it's just it's laughs in my opinion uh that's probably the most fun portion of the film is from that point on all the beginning and everything else that i just explained is pretty boring for the most part nothing too exciting nothing too special um but the rest of the film is really good and that's where we can start dissecting some of clark's favorite moments maybe oh my gosh there's so many it's such a great film uh (laughs) no i his his overacting there there there's a theme going on to these movies and that's that none of the characters are relatable or likable uh, especially for me it's just everyone's a dick especially in the invisible maniac it's like the the principal is just she's like trying to have sex with one of the students she's the she, like, student just like nestles his head inside her bosom yeah, and then she's like trying to blackmail the professor whose name is Dingledorf or something like that. That's uh, exactly it. <laughs> is it Dingledorf? It's, it's like, like it's, Dingledorn or something. It's, Ding- it's just yeah. I don't remember. It, it's it's oh, a stupid uh, sounding name. Is it Dornwinkle? Dornwinkle. That's the correct name. Yes. And I don't know, man. Like. Uh, yeah. Why is a physicist creating chemical compounds is my main question. Like, if, if this movie is meant to be taken seriously or enjoyed by regular people, just, first of all, we're looking at high schoolers' boobs. The entirety of the movie is just high school boobs. Well, we had this and, problem of understanding whether they were high school or whether they were um, uh, college. Like, for a second there... I was leaning towards maybe they're in college. I, I remember we actually have this in chat. Like, uh, yeah. I, I was really unsure. I love your comment. Uh, speaking of how yeah. unlikable they are, how many white guys that look the same will appear? That one cracked me up. I thought that they was all had the same <laughs> hair. They all had that same '80s feathered hair. And like when that guy was like talking to the principal, and she's like, "You need to have sex with me if you want to go to college, or I will revoke your scholarship." It's like. That's not how scholarships work. No. That's not how... No, principal. When you have a scholarship, you can't just be like, yeah, yeah, he doesn't want that scholarship anymore. No. No. <sighs> I don't know, man. Maybe. Maybe if they made more sense out of it. Like, the I think, worst part... Go ahead. I, I think that, like, um, in the 90s, if you were going to watch this movie, it was probably a great comedy. Like, that's it. Yeah. That's really the only thing I can think of. This is not uh, your typical horror film. It's even been called a comedy horror, but I don't know if anyone really set out to make this a comedy horror film when it first came out. Because it's got way too much tone of just Oops. horror. Yeah, well, just horror, yeah. Horror? <laughs> horror. It was all boobs. It was 90% boobs. And if you see a female yeah. on the movie, there is a 90% chance you're going to see her boobs. 95% if she's under the age of 30. Uh, even, they think, like, the only people you don't see naked are at the start of the film. Like, yes. even the even the news reporter has her boobs shown. Yes, which is funny because I was like, oh, hey, look, she didn't have her boobs shown. And then right at the end of the credits, stay around, don't leave. There's an important scene to be seen. <laughs> yeah, the ending was just didn't make any sense. The cops, you know, those those uh, whenever there's like an ending scene where there's a bloodbath and they show up and they're like, oh, look, it's a bloodbath. Oh, can you believe what happened here? It, that happens at the end, and they they just they're like, oh, Dingle Dorn. Wink, Winkleberry was here, and he, uh, oh, and look at this mess. Look, his his head's off, and he's dead. And uh, I'm going to spoil it. He's not dead. He's still he's still invisible. The person who died is is whoever didn't die in the movie, one of those guys who looks the same. Just, it's uh, Bunny's boyfriend, right? Is Bunny's I guess boyfriend, so. I think. Because Bunny, even... Bunny gets her head splat. Yeah. Stomped yeah, he her like Mario. Her <laughs> yeah, he Goomba stomped her. Yes. Yeah. He, yeah. He straight up just jumped, landed on her head, 
and then walks away. Doesn't even clean his shoes, doesn't change his shoes, and goes right home. Like that. He's like, I guess it's time to move, guys. I guess I've done it, and starts packing his <laughs> his shit. Oh, and then uh, Bunny's boyfriend kicks the door in with a shotgun, and they have this what awkward his... exchange. Yeah. For I don't know, felt like three freaking hours but it was probably like three minutes and uh are you talking about the invisible fight where they're both in yeah a binder fall over and it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. very lightly down hey guys i want you to just here. throw crap at the wall for the next 30 seconds ready they go even throw it just like mildly fell over like it was attached to a string and they're like all right tug it oh look at that fall down <laughs> and the deaf mute too like Oh, the poor janitor, yeah. <laughs> he just ran and said hamburger the whole time. Hello, oh, hamburger. Hello, <laughs> hamburger. God, is... Oh, man, I need to add. I, we need to get some sound clips of that. Throw it in here. That way people hamburger. can hear it. Hamburger. Uh, and then, yeah, and then, like you said, um, spoiler alert, he's not dead. He's actually alive. The cops leave the room. The potion just magically wears off at that exact moment. And then he just starts laughing. He does that laugh, which I'm not going to lie. Like, it's a great laugh. It's a maniacal laugh. It's evil. And he he does it the minute so the door shuts. They can't be far away. And he just starts insanely laughing. Like, where? How are you not hearing him? <laughs> yeah. At yeah, any well, point. The cops, the cops left to go get some coffee and donuts. It's been a long shift. Oh, man. Yeah, that's... That was, that broke my suspension of disbelief right there. That was it, <laughs> right at the end. Oh man. Uh, so, all in all, uh, what's your opinion, Clark, on this film? Watch again? Not watch again? This is something that you have to watch with alcohol and friends, and you have to fully understand that you're about to watch something you need to make fun of. Every time you see boobs, don't take a drink, though. Don't make that kind of drinking game because you will be dead. I agree 100% wholeheartedly. Um, you're never going to catch me watching this film again on my own. It would definitely be at a party. Uh, it'll be because I just bring up the worst horror film ever made. Uh, like maybe at the costume party this year at our Halloween party. Maybe we'll throw this on and get everyone to laugh at it. <laughs> I would be so embarrassed to show that to friends. <laughs> hey like you'd have to know your friends to show them that. Hey guys, want to watch the best horror porn ever? <laughs> oh man. Here like, we go. No move, no movie I've ever seen has that many, has that many gratuities, uh, booby scenes. It's like <laughs> there, there are at least two scenes where the girls are in the shower. Maybe even three. I think three. Three. Cause there, there are three peeping Tom moments. Yep. There's there's all of the girls the in there at first. Sequence. There's the dream sequence where they're in the shower naked, too. Oh, and you even have, I think, uh, it's not Bunny, it's the blonde chick. She goes back by herself, right? And then her boyfriend's watching her, but he catches the janitor, if I remember right. The, yeah, and then he looks down. Yeah. He's so like, oh, I can look at the boobies sh now, too. Sh shoot, there might be like four or five, actually. Four or five. Yeah, they're they're at least four, especially with the dream sequence. The, there, there are three peeping Tom sequences. There's the sequence where they're all naked in the shower, and he pinches one of the girls' butts, and then yeah, it might be five. Well, that was Videodrome and the Invisible Maniac. Um, one good, one not so good. Um, but yeah, that's that's the end of the first podcast. Thanks for listening. Uh, and uh, check us out next week. I'm not sure what we're going to watch yet, but uh, we got a long list. We just got to kind of pick the good, the bad, and the ugly and get it over with. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's Clark. I'm Curtis. And uh, thanks for listening. Have a good one. There are three peeping Tom sequences. There's the sequence where they're all naked in the shower and he pinches one of the girl's butts. And then, yeah, it might be five. <laughs>